So in the previous videos, we covered the invisible hand, market forces, that is demand and supply, the equilibrium. We also covered the shifters of demand curve. Now we're moving on towards the shifters of supply. So there are four determinants of supply. Remember, these lead to change the supply curve. Either it increases or it decreases. So let's begin with the first one change in prices of inputs or resources. Every commodity requires several resources. For example, if you talk about burgers, so you require minced meat, you would require chicken, you would require buns and sauces, even some labor and few machineries for the final product, that is burgers. So let's suppose if price of chicken rises, so when price of chicken rises, this definitely affects your cost of production. Your cost of production rises as well. So when it is expensive for you to make each burger, definitely you choose to supply less. But on the other hand, when price of any input decreases, definitely cost of production also decreases. So you choose to supply more. Coming towards the next shifter, that is change in number of sellers. So this weighs upon several aspects. For example, if in a particular uh, industry, you know, people are making a lot of money, let's say sugar or let's say rice. So there will be many entrants into this firm. This will change the number of sellers. Or on the other hand, if in a particular industry, a commodity is not making much money or the firms are bearing losses. So people tend to move out from that business that is they exit that particular business. Other than that, even if people are dying, there is an earthquake or there is a disease outbreak, this also changes the amount of sellers. So the third one is advancement in technology. Generally, we know that technology it is used to turn inputs into the final products as in you require machineries and then there is any innovation in machinery which enables the firms to hire less workers or maybe enables you to produce something in less time or utilizing less resources. So this somehow saves your cost of production. So whenever there is an advancement in technology, you always supply more and then changes in future expectations. So as a supplier, a lot changes with respect to future expectation, as in the amount you want to supply today and tomorrow is affected by change in prices. If you're expecting price of a good to increase maybe after two weeks, you will supply less today. And you will choose to supply more when prices actually rise. But on the other hand, if you know prices of a good decreases, they will tend to decrease in future. So definitely you will choose to supply more today so you can increase your revenue in profit. Let's begin with the cases. So remember, when the supply increases, the supply curve moves towards right. And when the supply decreases, the curve moves towards left. So beginning from the first scenario, it's change in prices of inputs or any resources. So we will analyze it via the market of ice creams. Now, there are several inputs in production of ice creams like sugar, milk, or cream, but let's suppose there is an increase in price of sugar. And we know that sugar is an important resource in the production of ice cream. So what will happen to the market of ice cream? Remember, every supplier has a limited amount of funds or resources for the production. So if price of any input rises due to any reason, then they have less budget to produce. Definitely, they will decrease the supply, so supply curve moves towards left, depicting a decrease in supply. 
So again, we're analyzing the market for ice cream. And the scenario is there is an advancement in technology. As in, there is a new machine which allows you to use ice creams efficiently and even requires you to use less resources. In simpler words, you can produce more ice creams in less time and you might even require less labor to help with that. So, what happens? Definitely your supply increases. You supply more. So, supply curve shift towards right. And at the new equilibrium, you see that the price has decreased to 10 and we're somewhere at quantity 40. So, this is your new equilibrium. So, we know that due to the current uh, outbreak of coronavirus pandemics, this has affected people's lives. So many people have died. And dying people, in simpler words, mean that you have less sellers. So, how will this affect the market for wheat? Definitely, less sellers mean that the supply curve will shift towards left. So, at the new equilibrium, you notice a higher price and it fall in quantity. A change in future expectations significantly affects your behavior, the amount you prefer to supply today and tomorrow. Definitely, when you as a supplier are aware that prices of a commodity are about to rise in future, so you would choose to supply less today and store more for the time when price actually rises. And when you're aware that price of a commodity is about to fall, so definitely you as a supplier would choose to supply more today to generate more revenue. So let's analyze the market for hand sanitizers. So we know that due to the outbreak of disease, people prefer hand sanitizers and the price of hand sanitizers have risen, and it will tend to aggravate more in future. So how does this affect your current supply? Definitely you will choose to provide the commodity less today. So when you choose to supply less, it means your supply curve moves towards the left. And at the new equilibrium, you notice a higher price and a fall in quantity. So we have a new scenario. There is a hurricane and also a heat wave during summers. Now, what do you think? Will this just affect the demand curve or the supply curve? It will affect both. Let's analyze it with the market for ice creams. So let's begin with the hot weather. We know hot weather alters our preferences among so many things like we prefer more ice creams. In summers, we prefer to utilize more sun bombs. So here we're analyzing the market for ice creams. At any given price, people will prefer to buy more ice creams due to a heat wave. So this will shift the demand curve towards right. And on the other hand, you notice that there is a hurricane as well. So what does hurricane does? Hurricane destroys the crops. So it has destroyed the sugar crops. And you know sugar is an important input to produce ice cream. So when price of any key resource rises, it affects the cost of production. Definitely it would be expensive for sellers to produce ice cream. So they would choose to decrease their supply. And when they decrease their supply, the supply curve moved towards left. So now we have a new equilibrium point where the new demand curve and the new supply curve intersects. So you might notice that there is a significant rise in prices from the previous equilibrium to the new equilibrium, but there is a slight change in quantity. So that's how it works. There are some scenarios in which only the demand curve shifts and there are scenarios in which only the supply curve is affected. But there are some cases where both the curves are changing.
So in these scenarios, you have to analyze the new market equilibrium point, And then as per the graph shows, you illustrate the change in prices and the changes in quantity. So finally, as you all are aware of the shifters of demand and supply, I have some questions for you. So you have to analyze the market for pizzas, all right? The first question is there is an increase in price of a substitute good that is pizza bread. Remember, you have to analyze that how does an increase in price of pizza bread affects the market for pizzas? Remember, pizza bread is a substitute of pizza. Second, there is an advancement in technology. There are advanced ovens which cuts the baking time in half. So in simpler words, you can produce more pizzas in this time. Third, price of cheese increases. Now you have to think on it. Fourth, price of pizza decreases. How will this affect the market for pizzas? And finally, on multiple, you can say franchises, donkey meat was found in pizzas. So how will this affect the market for pizzas? Remember, there are three steps to solve this question. First of all, you have to analyze whether each statement, is it a shifter of demand or supply? Second, does it increase or decrease the demand or supply? Third, what is the new equilibrium point, the new equilibrium price, and equilibrium quantity? So you follow up these three steps, and hopefully you will be right. Besides this, you will get the answers in the coming video. Till then, please read the book and practice the questions.